Steph Curry talked about Kamala Harris and why she's the easy choice. Oh, Here we boy. go. The reaction was great. There's also obviously a lot of noise from, uh, in terms of any time you step into this lane, you know um, it's going to be received, uh, you know, in a lot of different ways. And I, for me, it's all about creating conversations that are about being decent human beings. First and foremost, I think we've lost that a little bit to where um, obviously endorsing Kamala is important for me, for my family. Um, Why? And, what are the being, issues you care about most? Say what? What are the issues you care uh, about? I just know from especially women's rights and thinking about, you know, what's at stake with this election um, and understanding, like, we need to be in a position where uh, women have the right to choose what's right for them. And that's at the top of the list for me. I have amazing women in my life who, you know, been a uh, huge inspiration to me. Uh, but knowing Kamala and, and having been around her, um, and I understand she's qualified for this job. She's, uh, I think, representing what it means to be a great leader and being a, a decent human being in terms of representing our country the right way. So it's, it's an easy choice for me, but to be able to have a, a, be in a situation where you can be a part of the DNC, do a video like that, um, you know, let people know where I feel like, but foster positive conversations, you know, through it all. I think that's what our country needs. So, you know, the Christians in the streets and the on social media is going at him like, yeah, going at him. Steph, Steph, come on, man, Steph, come on. What are you doing? You a Christian? And a story did come out uh -huh. about his mom, okay, saying that she wanted to abort Steph, okay. But uh -huh. her, but her, um, I believe her mom or or when somebody was like, you're not going to abort him. He's, you're going to have that child. You know what I mean? So some people are saying that's hypocritical of him because. He knows the story of him possibly mm -hmm. an abortion, but you're you're going for somebody who was that. So what do you guys think? Well, I got off the Steph bus with good times. Oh, uh, I, ain't been, I ain't been back on that bus yet. I still, when I hear him in interviews, I still t turn off YouTube because I just I'm really like, man that bothered yeah, me. Yeah, it was bro. trash. That bothered me. Really? Yeah, I don't that think bothered I finished me so episode. bad, man. A baby selling drugs and yeah. shooting up his community. <laughs> Yeah, and you're the executive producer. Terrible. Did that go away, by the way? Because I've never even searched it on Netflix, but well, um, it went time. away, right? I'm, no, I'm thinking it's probably still on. It's probably still on Netflix. Trash. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so back to this conversation. <laughs> to this conversation. Like a baby shooting dice. <laughs> no, I need it was ridiculous. so offended. <laughs> so offended by that man. Um, so back to this conversation. Um, I was having this conversation with all of you guys before we started the show, and I guess, I mean, Mike's hot now, so I got to keep it going, right? <laughs> um, always seem to get in trouble when Sean isn't here, so let me be wise with my word, my choice. I was just saying, basic, based off what people are saying about one person, and I'll just say this, what people are saying about one candidate, um, I, I, I need to see that fruit. I need mm. to see that 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 bad fruit being dropped in front of me before I'm like, okay, so this person is a witch. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> like I, because that was the first thing. That was the first thing my mother asked me when I sent her the clip of the show. Was like, yeah, so what you think about this? And she was like, what does she do? How is she a witch? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and so that's my thing. Is like one candidate you can you can hear the fruit dropping off the the edge of a table yeah that's rotten and bad and you know just whatever but then the other person is like okay you're attacking somebody's character you're attacking what their record was what they did and then only one of them is a politician really well i think i think this they had at to the, go through scrutiny at, at, the, at, at, at the end yeah. of the yeah, year at the end of the day i i think to me and this is just my personal opinion I don't think there's nobody good in politics. No, that's true. Yeah, I, I don't think that because I think even even if we think about like even for us as black people, if we think about Obama, if you had to see what Obama did in office for like maybe bombing a country that he, you know what I'm saying? Like I think anytime any president has to do something that America will probably if the citizens seen it, probably be like, is that you right think, to you do? Think, you think getting Osama bin Laden was bad? No, I'm saying oh. I'm saying maybe you maybe you bombed the place. And you thought Osama bin Laden was there, but it was a bunch of kids there, and it was it was some other innocent people there. But you thought he was there, so you're like, "Hey, we gotta drop a bomb on that," and that happens. It, yeah, it, it does war. happen. I yeah. mean, honestly, yeah. going back to Samson, right? When Samson collapsed um, that Coliseum at the, it was a wedding, right? Yeah, yeah. There were men, women, and children in there that died. Yeah, he killed them all. You know. Yeah. Um, and so, to me, it feels like yeah, some things. 
Jer- it, Jerry's a, a our producer Jerry. He he might not like this word I use. Um, it it seems like I and I might be watching too many movies when I say this too. Casualties of war. Yeah. Yeah. Casualties of war. Yeah. And maybe that's not a bad thing as I thought because Jerry didn't look at me like when <laughs> collateral damage. Hurt me. But um yeah and so to me it's like man you can drop a you could drop a drone and kids might be in the vicinity yeah. and debris might kill them gotcha. you might mm-hmm. ne- necessarily be going for that right and so um are you are you making <laughs> are you what? are you co-signing it no 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 what i'm saying is what, what i was going to say was i think this is the rotation of our country yeah. since 1976 i'm mean, 1776 for every four years we get trash and people don't like and half the country likes the trash and the other half doesn't like the trash yeah. then the next four years we get some more trash or the <laughs> ne- you see what i'm saying and yeah. it goes back and well, forth i went back and i looked at debates from like eisenhower days i, I you know what i'm saying and this the same thing toxicity on one side the country hates this person the other person other side of the country yeah. likes this person yeah it never changes yeah. in our lifetime it has never changed but here's i think here's the question though mm-hmm. from steph's perspective he's probably one he him and trump clashed before so that's i understand he don't like him period mm-hmm. but at the same time do you think do you think his reasoning is is fair because he's saying that i have a lot of women around me and i would like them for um their rights not to be taken away from them what do, what do you guys think because that's yep. way that's one of his things his points was and then we have people in the comments saying that just because he wants women's rights doesn't mean he's for abortion steph i feel like that's the main topic though that yeah. they're caring with women's rights is <sighs> abortion and it's like i have wonderful women of god too i like to believe i'm a wonderful woman of god yeah. but i don't stand for abortion mm-hmm. i don't and I don't either. And I can tell you personally that I have talked women out of abortions. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I've literally said, please don't abort that child. You know? Have you helped them afterwards? Uh, no. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. No, 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 no. The okay. Lord okay. is going to help. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Me and this person, listen, every time I talk about a personal situation on online, I always get somebody to comment back. But me and this person haven't talked in over 20 years, so maybe this is safe to say. But I actually had somebody I knew, somebody I knew got pregnant by the pastor of the church who was Ooh. married. Wow. Right? And she was like, I'm getting an abortion. I was like, can't do that. Yeah. And she was like, he's saying I'm going to ruin his life. I'm ruining my life. I got it. Yeah. What can I, what the, and I was like, you need to be able to pray through this thing and not let his decision because he was afraid of being exposed yeah but she was like but she was like i i just already have a kid and she was like and then i'm a single mom and i'm gonna stay a single mom and i'm gonna do it a second time it was already hard the first time and i'm like do not do that i was like that is something that you would have to live with for the rest of your life and the enemy wants to agonize you over that for the Mm -hmm. rest of your life life. don't do it so she didn't do it and she has a wonderful son to this day how's the son now how old? Yeah. Um, a teenager. Oh, wow. Yeah, a teenager now. Wow. They mm-hmm. don't talk about the repercussions after getting an abortion as well. Mm. Yeah. They don't talk about that. And then also, my story is similar to Chef Curry's story. My mom was going to abort me. Mm. She was actually on the abortion table mm. when the voice of the Lord spoke to her Amen. and said that death would be her reward. Ooh. Jesus. So I wouldn't be here yeah. wow. if God didn't literally speak to my mom and make her get up. And that's where I feel like this is this is where we have to step in as Christians. Sorry, mama. It has to be <laughs> yeah, yeah. it has to be a voice. Don't tell my business, right? It has to be a voice outside of a vote. Yeah. It has to be a voice yeah. outside of a vote. Yeah. There's another person. I, I have a goddaughter. And her mother was about to abort her. She got pregnant at 17. Mm. And I literally said, now that person's life I did step into. I said, if you don't abort this child, I will be in in her life or his life some way. Mm -hmm. Right? And she was like, what about Godparent? And I was like, cool. And that's how it happened. Um, And so, yeah, it's one of those things, man, where outside of the vote, you got to be a voice. And I think if Christians continue to do that, then... It works. It works in favor for us because one, we as Christians aren't sitting up trying to abort our kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're not making the personal choice against God ourselves. But if we hear about somebody that's making the the person or wants to make the personal choice, or we have somebody in the situation that is going through something like that, then we can step in and be that voice. And so, you know, um, but with Steph, 
and, and, and this is the thing too. Um, Should we judge his Christianity? Because I think that's what a lot of people are doing. Also, judging they're judging Christian. They're judging no. his Christianity. I, I've no, seen the God say, can't. "See, that's the reason." See, I, I, I'm not going to judge his salvation, but I will judge his theology and doctrine, or whatever, because I think as a body we need to take a bigger stand on loving what God loves and hate what God hates and that our hearts should break for the things that God hearts breaks. So if you're going to stand up and you are going to vocalize something mm -hmm. on the platform saying as a Christian, I mm -hmm. believe it needs to line up with the Bible. What about mm. on the conservative ticket where you've got capital punishment? They killed people back in the day. <laughs> mm -hmm. We look in the Bible when they disobey. It's funny because me and my, my sis was talking about this. When um, the Lord told David not to do a census of the army, and oh, yeah. he did anyway, yeah. mm -hmm. and he came back and said, okay, you got two choices. Either I'm going to kill some of your army, or there's going to be a famine. Mm. Does this yeah. apply? I think it does. I, <laughs> but, man, like, I, I just, I just, uh, you it's, know, it's just, it's just one of those things because politics and Christianity, in my personal opinion, it's hard because on one end, you have people going so hard against abortion and yeah. other stuff which we should but at the same time we overlook the poor we overlook the needy yeah. we overlook we we overlook the the injustice yeah. yeah you know what i'm saying and then and then the vice versa you know what i mean so i i think that's why i'm like do i think christians should be in politics yes to make the difference that yeah. god has called them to be the ambassadors there yeah. but at the same time i think as christians we shouldn't fight back and forth i think we should i are, agree with that are, yeah. um our lives are kingdom based. Should we be? Should we? Should we engage in politics? Where it's like we tell our opinions and what the scriptures say. Of course. Yeah. But we got to be both. We can't. We, we got to be. We got to be where it's like we got to be there when injustice happened. We got to yeah. be there when we need to feed the poor and the needy, and yeah. we got to clothe the people like Jesus said. Yeah. And the widows, and then and also we need to be there for people who, like you said, you've been there for somebody who's about to talk somebody off of getting an abortion yeah. or then also um, loving people that may be different than us as well but telling them the truth you know what yeah. I mean so I just think I think we have to be the whole model we just can't be one party you know what I mean and I think yeah. some, so many of us has been just one party alright oh hold on oh, real quick so my biggest tiff with this abortion conversation and it go it tracks with what you're saying is that we're talking about the end Let's go to the beginning. Let's mm. go to the decisions that led up to this. Oh, yeah. Because there are too many people that are trying to use abortions as birth control. Mm. Yeah. So it's yep. like, and I do know someone in college that this girl was on her 10th. Jeez. And it's like, she wasn't my friend. I wasn't associated with her. She was at Moleage but, all the time. <laughs> but it's like, like here. listen. Burn, baby, burn. Yeah. It's 2024. Mm. Like we, we have to we have to make better decisions. So I understand as a believer, biblically, I accepted the understanding that the Lord does not want me to have sex before marriage. And I am honoring yeah. that. And that other people aren't Christians and they're not living that lifestyle. So you're not honoring that. Which that's your path. I pray, you know, you find the Lord and then see his goodness in that and why he decided for us to live this way. Yeah. But yeah. we got to make better decisions on the front end so that you don't get to eight months because that's a big thing about this abortion thing. Yeah. Because a lot of people like to say, oh, well, you know, if somebody gets raped, this and this and that, there are things in order for that. You're supposed to go to the hospital. They flush your system. My issue is you get pregnant and then you're deciding, oh, it's month six. I don't want this baby no more. I'm going to abort them. They can live on their own outside the womb now. Mm -hmm. And I've literally witnessed a girl about to have her baby shower and she aborted the baby right before the baby shower. Uh, literally like a week before. And still got them gifts. No, <laughs> I don't think so. Gift but cards. it's just come, like... Come in with the pillow on their stomach. <laughs> you get them gifts. Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> but it's like, come on, y'all. We got to make better decisions. In 2024, there's too many contraceptives. There's too many things and steps that you can take before. There's spermicides. I don't know if I can say that on here. Yeah. There's so <laughs> many things that you can do to avoid this. So you're saying that the... You're saying that conversations that some people are having on the Christian side are we got to be anti-fornication first more so than we are anti-abortion. I feel like the church is having a lot of anti-fornication conversations, but I feel like as far as politics where it's like the world, it, where the nation is involved, 
um, that's not just Christian people. I'm saying with them, make better decisions, mm. make stronger choices, have forward thinking. Because I understand like having sex, even what they say condoms are what 99% proof. Yeah. But it's like double forms of birth control. Are you on birth control? Because mm-hmm. there's well, women well, well, I also well, heard that weren't. Well, we about we about to move on, but oh. I guess the question goes: As a Christian, should you put your kids on birth control? Oof. Because then, uh, in essence, you're no. engaged no. in sex. You shouldn't. Yeah. We should be you teaching shouldn't. them no and but why God but, says no. But here's a question. Should a Christian parent stay say, hey, I want you to do it. I want you to be abstinent, but if but just in case I want you to learn how to put on a condom. Should That's that happen? Because remember that show back in the day, the pastor show, when when they, when they had that, and he was like, I had to teach my kids to put on protection because I got burnt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, fair. Uh, it, the no, because um, I would protect my children with the word, and not with not with something tangible. You know what I mean? Like I would I would definitely say if you're not in this word, then this this little item I bought from the store isn't gonna help you. No, it, it won't. But it ain't gonna I, save you. But I, from there, from a perspective of that pastor was like. God forbid, I don't want them to. I want them to wait till they're married. But God forbid, if they was to get into a situation, and then she don't know what to do, he don't know what to do, and they get and they get pregnant, then it's like. No. And I'm not saying I'm, we're not we're not saying endorse it. We're not saying hey, this is how you have premarital sex. Mm-hmm. We're saying we're saying just in case if you do this, then yeah. this. You know what I'm saying? You need to learn how to do this. When I was in high school, I carried around condoms. And it was your daughters the, are going to look back up all these episodes and gonna be like, our daddy was the biggest hypocrite. I didn't. I, it was. I didn't buy them. I didn't buy them. My friends would give them to me as we we're headed out to parties. And it was your mom the, found them. Your mom and nah, dad found them. Oh, nah. Okay, I, mean, I had them in college. Too. It, it makes an imprint in your wallet, so they already know what's up. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm saying, like, especially if you've been in there too long. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but but you know what? It was the slimiest I ever felt in my life oh. when it came to trusting god in the process Mm. it was slimy because it was like god i'm standing on your word but they gave me this just in case i get into a situation but you know what one of the things i'm I'm just for anybody out there that's like yo see the truck no i am pro abstinence wait to marriage oh me too i I think everybody here is wait to marriage i'm just saying what i've heard over the years even in churches where people are saying maybe you need to teach kids how to put on a condom just in case that's what i've heard i'm gonna tell you like every time i got to a situation where it could happen and the holy spirit was right in my ear bro oh my god so so Mm -hmm. arresting and i'm so grateful for it man so grateful for it because i remember um the young lady was like she she kind of like told me we were you know just go hang out and watch a movie at my house and then the situation just went she tricked you like that. Left fast, right? Right. And you I, went, you went I literally Ryan. said, literally said, man, you want to read the Bible? And I'm like, who said that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was quick. And and she was like, uh, sure. We read the word, and I went home after that. Amen. But but it was like, it was like, it was arresting, man. Like like I felt the presence of the Lord yeah. with me. Like it was like he was the one that gave me the Bible. Yeah. Amen. Like, here, so I, I feel like you know I'm gonna trust the Word of God and mm-hmm. I'm gonna trust my kids to be in that Word to not have to worry about what they are doing and not doing. And I'm gonna continue to talk to them. Yeah. And have conversation with them, and I'm gonna set the example. Mommy and Daddy set the example. Yeah, yeah that's, that's good. great. Yeah, that's good. Because my mom definitely taught us. We, we had full conversations But she taught us consequences mm. So yeah. she was like Even though a condom May protect you from this It don't protect you From everything else The emotional Psychological All the rest and that's, of that yeah. And that's great yeah. And that's what parents should do yeah. Like yeah. even if You talk about Both sides of it Like yeah. okay This is a condom That they said They would protect you from But you get soul ties there. Yeah. You're, like you yeah. need to explain The whole gamut And yeah. I don't think Honestly I don't think Me, me and my was talking about this I don't think we have stuff for kids like I remember when we in our twenties. Don't say that. No, I'm saying in our twenties we didn't. We I, I was part of a conference that helped kids try to help kids learn from like not have sex and being abstinent. No, I was in a you know purity class. Yeah, not a pure. It was like a conference, and um, for kids it had like we had like rappers come and everything for like for like 
entertainment, okay, but you. but like the like the breakout session was about health and how do you you know be pure? How do you do different things? But what I'm saying is that those don't exist to the point where somebody would like her mom telling her like, yes, this is a condom. This can protect you, but this won't protect you from nits. This yeah. won't protect you from soul ties. This yeah. won't protect you from yeah. emotional damage. You know, yeah. stuff like that. But all that to say is, be pure and holy. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. And we're praying for Brother 